Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. Hey have you ever put together some of that self-assemble furniture? I have too. Sometimes I'll purchase two or three of the same thing, like desk chairs. The first one's a bit of a chore, but the second two are a piece of cake, because you know how they go together. And yes I am a typical male, so I only glance at the instructions. I see it as a mental challenge or a puzzle, and I want to figure it out on my own. The other day, I was putting together a desk, and it was a bit more complicated than normal. So on this one, I actually read all the instructions, but I still managed to put part of it together backwards. I miss this one little obscure diagram. There were actually no words, just pictures, and they were so small, you could barely see them. But all's well that ends well. Ironically, I have experienced the same type of event in my spiritual life. Sometimes the most powerful scriptures are hidden and obscure. Everyone knows John 3.16. Everyone knows Genesis 1.1. But there are two very obscure verses in the Bible, that if you embrace them, and apply them to your everyday living, it will revolutionize your life. Both passages are stated in an off-the-cuff manner, by the two individuals. One was by John the Baptist, and the other was from Mary, the mother of Jesus. We don't really think of John the Baptist as a prophet sometimes, but Jesus said he was the greatest prophet of all time. And because the Catholic Church literally worships Mary, we Protestants tend to downplay her role. But each of these somewhat obscure people, made obscure statements, that rank as pinnacles of wisdom. When some of John the Baptist's disciples came and told him that he was losing followers to Jesus, he made a profound statement. First he assured his disciples that the process was going as planned, and not to worry. But he then said, regarding Jesus, he must increase, and I must decrease. The statement by Mary, was equally obscure and profound. When she asked Jesus to perform his first public miracle, by changing water into wine at the wedding of a friend, she instructed the servants by saying, whatever he says, do it. So John's input was, he must increase, and I must decrease. Mary's was, whatever he says, do it. So Jesus must increase in my life, and I must decrease. My will, has to submit to his will. That's called walking in the Spirit. The Apostle Paul said, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. That's your will, versus God's will. So walking in the Spirit, simply means to be obedient to God, and walk in fellowship with one another. Denying what you want, and embracing what God wants. You must decrease, and he must increase. Add that to Mary's advice, and you have the perfect recipe for a fulfilled life. And what was the reoccurring message of Jesus? His message was a message of love, genuine love. Not empty words, he always stressed that love is a verb, not a feeling. A verb is an action word, so love has action. He summed up the whole Bible in one sentence, love God with your whole heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor, as yourself. So to live life to its fullest, you must decrease your own personal desires, and prioritize God's personal desires for you. The end result will be a life of contentment, rather than frustration, knowing that you are fulfilling your calling, and your destiny. Peace be unto you and your house. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he lay in the garden of Gethsemane, lamenting his unavoidable fate. He was so stressed by what was about to unfold, that he literally sweat great drops of blood. But in his greatest trial, he submitted to the Father by saying, Not my will, but yours be done. Are you facing a trial? Do you have a hard decision to make? Don't try to assemble your life, without reading the instructions. Submit your will to God, and he will orchestrate your success, and salvation.